for you need to get up there? Uh, you're fine if you're where you are. All right. engineering there. It's not pretty, but it's working. <laughs> contain the number of you know minutes from 7.45 to 8 o'clock or 8.15 to 8.20. It doesn't really show how many minutes each of the items on the agenda are going to take. And so I was just thinking, I was just thinking to be more friendly towards residents who may be interested in coming to a meeting if they knew that 30 minutes was going to be spent talking about communications with residents, that you know you can't tell whether it's just going to be a quick two-minute deal or a 30-minute deal. 30-minute item seems to be very important. And it should, in my opinion, it should have been made more aware to residents that it was going to be a long discussion and perhaps resident in input would be helpful. That's all I'm saying. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Any further questions on the agenda this evening? No. Um, all in favor of adopting the agenda as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, Director Shea is um, moved and Director Perry has seconded the motion which has now been unanimously approved. So the agenda is adopted. Okay, moving on to the consent calendar, item C on the agenda. Does the board have any questions about the December 10th meeting minutes and or bills paid? Nothing from the board. Does any Board. member of the public have a comment? Yes, yes thank you. Mm -hmm. um, again, it kind of 
talks about that one item that took 30 minutes of discussion between the board members. Um, in the draft minutes, it doesn't give any information really about what was discussed in those 30 minutes. And I was just going to suggest, and you'll understand why later in the meeting, but you were, I was just going to suggest that something like this, it might be good to add a few sentences that might interest the public, interest residents, and, and you could say, oh, we, we talked about this, so we're going to, you know, get the residents into it, or we talked about this, and we'd like some ideas from the residents, so we're going to further the discussions. I'm thinking that you need to, if you want to get residents to come to these meetings, I would think that you might want to put out some information that would make them interested. And the communications between residents and board members is, I mean, this has been a topic that's been going on for five or six years. I remember when Mr. Horn put out that information, and I don't know what ever happened to it. But in any case, just putting some verbs out there to make the meetings look more interesting rather than we discussed communication, mm -hmm. rather than we received a report. If there was something really interesting on the report, maybe you could say, oh, we talked about blah, 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 blah. In any case, I just thought, in some instances, you might want to increase the length of the minutes just to make it more interesting for residents. Very good, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Stephen? First of all, uh, happy 2020. Um, and, uh, yeah, a couple comments. Uh, first of all, on the draft minutes, um, there was public comment on the closed session. Why does the, the, the draft minutes say there were none? Are we accurately capturing what happened in the meeting? The video is. Why are we writing down something that didn't happen? What's the purpose of written uh, draft minutes if they are inaccurate? Please correct that. I did make a lot of comments on the Miller versus Marinwood uh, case. Uh, you've spent a lot of money. You're on the eve of a settlement. Um, You've spent a lot of legal resources, a lot of taxpayer resources, we're resolving something with elderly residents that could have been resolved through principled negotiation. They indicated early on. That's number one. So I'm going to publish that, and I am asking you right now to make sure that you have accurate records uh, in the minutes. I spoke uh, toward on the cup closed session. And that's very clear. None of you can deny, deny it. Now the other thing is in, you know, there's a lot of expenses here. I noticed Phil Hansel charged another $1,200 to prepare uh, the application. And it seems to me because we have not, he's done a lot of work and we have not uh, really uh, seen too many bills from the last time we had asked for this. We have no idea, the public has no idea how much his services are costing. I'm estimating it's close to $50,000. He has denied it to me and he says I'm a liar and tells other people I'm a liar, etc. But the fact of the matter is we do know how much he's uh, charged and we the, we, the public, deserve to know that. The other thing we also need to know is how much you're investing in, how much is not being captured in this document, this document. I mean, you're, you're, you're obviously uh, want to be very careful of the information that you share with the public. So, request one, I believe it's your legal responsibility to, to have accurate uh, meeting notes and not deceptive notes. So I'd like you to do that. 
Number two, I'd like you to disclose to the public how much this is going to cost. As you know, we're about ready to go to the Planning Commission uh, to discuss uh, the project over here, and no one in town, except you guys, knows how much this project is supposed to, to is, is budgeted for. And uh, I believe that's your responsibility. Uh, I have other things to say later on. Thank you. Motion to approve the consent calendar. Um, you approved a lie. Um, the appropriate time to make comments about a closed session is prior to the closed session. You did indeed make comments about the closed session, but you did it in open time. Okay? I did not do it in open time, and there's no way I can comment on something that didn't occur. Usually what happens is that happens when you come out of meeting. We discuss X, and then there's a comment from the public on it. Okay. okay, now you can check other meetings. I have, and that's the way it's done, Jeff, and I hope that you follow the law this year. I'll do my best. Thank you so much for your advice. <clears throat> okay, we, have we, have, we have representatives here who understand the law. We have a motion. Made by Director Green and seconded by Director Shea to approve the consent calendar as presented. Do I have? Um, is there any further discussion? Okay, I'll move the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, now we will move to um, item D, which is public comment, open time. For items not on the agenda, for anyone in the public who wishes to directly address the board. Okay, Stephen, you're first. Go ahead. All right. Um, we're neighbors, and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We're all neighbors, and uh, we rely on you guys to be wise stewards of this uh, district and I don't know exactly what the motivations are I'd like to think that they're pure motivations but we have spent a tremendous amount of money on non-productive things in the district we still have not addressed safety concerns we have a major capital expense which is being hidden We've got two CSD directors, at least, who uh, will be profiting from uh, this project. And we don't, we don't actually know uh, what the reasons are or how much we're paying them. We really just don't know. Do you want to know who they are? Maybe you're personally uh, profiting from them. But I, I, I think... I think um, I think the represent the as representatives of the community, you have a obligation to do a better job of public outreach, which you claim to want to do, um, and transparency. And it's not really that hard. Um, so uh, maybe maybe the question is why you feel like you can't be transparent. That's certainly a question I ask. Okay, thank you, uh, Linda. Yeah. Um, now, this is my opinion, but it's also input I've heard, or the things that I've observed from going to the commission meetings and the board meetings. And for many, many years, I thought that the Park and Rec Commission should probably only meet six times a year, because for the Park and Rec Commission, a lot of the commissioners don't show up. And sometimes the meetings are canceled because they're not going to have a problem. Or it, it, and also, you've noticed in the last few years, there have been a lot of, uh, a lot of angst, oh, not angst, a lot of agitation over not having representation on the Park and Rec Commission. So my suggestion is consider scheduling meetings six times a year just for the Park and Rec. It's 
kind of similar with fire commission, but not so much. Um, this year and last year, they've had a hard time finding extra commissioners, you know, or commissioners to fill in the blanks. And there have been some discussions on, you know, well, maybe strangling people to stay. But again, I was thinking maybe eight times a year for fire commission meetings. And then I started thinking, well, heck, the board is kind of the same way. Um, an awful lot of times when I'm at the board meetings, there's at least one board member missing. And it was really, really hard a year ago to find anybody who wanted to be on the board. And I think one person might have been strangled to, to be reappointed on the board. And then we had this other person residing here tonight just be appointed to the board. And it's like, why is it so hard? And this is part of the uh, thing about communication, you know, with residents. And let's, um, I was just trying to figure out what can we do, or what could you do, to get people more interested. And I know that these meetings sometimes are very, very boring, but sometimes they really, really have good, good topics to discuss. And going back to my earlier comments about minutes, if you could pick a couple of topics that are interesting to residents, add a little more verbiage, not only in the minutes, but I was also thinking in the Marinwood reviews, maybe we could have one or two board members each time a Marinwood review is put out, just to highlight some of the exciting, interesting, fun things that the community has been doing. And I'm not talking about the pool, I'm not talking about you know some drinking event. I'm just talking about board. How do you get people to want to come to the board? Well, you have interesting topics, in my opinion. And how do they know about the interesting topics? Well, they don't unless you tell them somehow. And I know that's part of what you're trying to do. But I, I think one more way of getting residents interested in attending board meetings, and maybe by attending more board meetings or finding out more about what the commissions are doing, maybe these residents might say, oh, I didn't know they did that. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds like something I might be interested in. So, you know, tease them or cajole them. Just try to get people interested by putting out more information, not only in the minutes, on just one or two topics, maybe every meeting, but also in the Marinewood review. Thank Thanks. you. Appreciate it. OK. Okay, moving on to um, item E, district <coughs> matters. Um, first one is E1, that's the uh, Board of Directors Communication, Public Outreach, and Potential Opportunities, which I will speak to. I know I'm not supposed to speak, but I'm going to speak to it anyway. My apologies. Anyway, okay. Um, as we discussed in the last um, board meeting in December, um, and as Linda has alluded to several times this evening, um, there did seem to be a consensus on the board that we try to um, further our outreach to our public and with several um, ideas and, that, and several notions. And that is to find out what's on their minds and what would interest them. Um, to also let them know what we do, um, both as a board and also the commissions what projects are underway or um, envisioned, and that kind of thing. And to that end, um, what we did conclude is that it's very, uh, probably the best avenue for us to do this is to have some meetings other than this one where we could make ourselves available to the public and answer any questions or field any ideas that they may have. Um, given the fact that um, we, I don't think we published yet a complete calendar for all of the annual events this year, although I understand they're about to be published. Um, I pretty much looked at the first quarter um, this year, and I've come up with the following, not too difficult. Um, we have 
Um, as was mentioned earlier, aside from this board meeting in a two-week period, we're going to have a planning commission meeting that talks about the project and the uh, park panhandle. Um, literally two weeks after that, we'll have our next board meeting. So I would assume that there will be lots of opportunities to speak to the public about that project. Um, irrespective of what direction it goes in at that Planning Commission meeting. Um, after that, there's the Raise a, gl um, a Glass event, which is on February 29th. Now, through every fault of my own, I've made plans to be away on that day. <laughs> I'm going to be out of the country. So I'm wondering, are any of the board members willing to spend an hour or two at that event to meet with the public? It's a uh, leap day. Do we, do we Sorry, did you that? Is that? This is the do raise a glass. It's a raise wine. Oh, the wine. wine. I am available. Would you be willing to? Yeah. Okay, great. Anybody else need to think about it? I mean, I would love to be there. I'm just not. It's the middle of the afternoon, and I'll probably be at the office on a Saturday. It's tax time. Okay. Well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in mind. Um, I'd like it to be. I'd, it would be nice if there were two. See if I can do it. But yeah. And, yeah. And I apologize in advance for this. I booked a vacation and I completely lost sight of the fact that so I'll be coming back on that day. <laughs> Smart guy. Yeah. Great leadership. I know. I apologize. <laughs> At any rate, um, the next opportunity, other than a board meeting here. Um, we discussed the possibility of setting up a table at the Marinwood Market, um, you know, perhaps from 10 to noon or something like that on a Saturday. Um, in March, the 21st and the 28th, there are opportunities. I will go talk to the management about that and see if there's any particular issues with regard to that. And I will certainly volunteer to be one of the people that sit there. Okay? So that's what I've come up with so far. Um, I appreciate some of the comments that were made about other ideas to me. Um, we are definitely too late for the Marinwood Review, which is going to, I believe, be published in a couple of weeks. Um, and also, that idea, while it was proposed at the last meeting, um, it does sort of throw a little wrench in the publication of the, of the uh, document itself. There is a particular number of pages that have to go in in order to fold it up and print it properly and this and that. But we'll continue to think about that because some of your ideas have merit. So anyway, so we have at least one person for the 29th. Um, I'll keep that open. And again, we have a board member missing this evening. I will reach out to her and see if she is also uh, possibly willing to um, sit with Isabella on the 29th at the um, Raise a Glass event. And that's all I have for tonight. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Um, we have to discuss the A-frame signs. So, um, Excuse me, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Um, we also discussed the A-frame signs that would be potentially put out throughout the neighborhood, or at least two, to um, entice people to participate. Or announce it, please. Or announce it. Okay, yeah. I will, I'll work on that as well. I can do some of this stuff before I take up my vacation. But um, yeah, I'll do what I can to do that. And uh, certainly, any avenues that we have at our uh, disposal to um, highlight that there will be such a table there with um, directors to listen and to uh, communicate with our, um, our constituents, um, we will certainly put that out well ahead of time. Um, I also have a question about materials that uh, the board of regents will be part of the um, table on mm -hmm. the raised glass. I would imagine um, a schedule of uh, monthly meetings, just informing you know, handouts with dates and times um, for uh, fire and fire commission and board meetings. Um, should we also have handouts with bylaws? Mm -hmm for each commission, or is that not necessary? No, I don't think that's necessary, really, but I would say that that would be an opportunity to do what Linda suggests, and that is, you know, some of the things that we're working on right now, um, 
you know, what's on our minds, you know, that kind of thing. So, that's a good idea. Little, you're talking about just a little handout that say at some of the events it says this is some of the exciting things that have been happening. Join us for blah blah blah. Absolutely. Perfect. Yes. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you both. Definitely. Uh, Stephen. Yeah. Um, well, Jeff, I. It, I, I'm going to take your word, what you say that you want to uh, do outreach, but I, I would like uh, an honest answer from you. Um, you know, there's 200 people that signed a petition to have a meeting on this uh, Marinwood maintenance shed, and you dismissed it out of hand, saying that these people were uninformed, uh, they are not going to consider this at this time, because they've been given wrong information. Now, this is without actually talking to anybody or making any attempt at outreach. Now you're talking about a meeting after the planning commission and, and uh, hearing. And, and there again, I, I think you're, you, you know, you can say you want communication, but it doesn't appear from my perspective that you actually do want any kind of communication. What you want is you want people either you, you want people to approve the choices that you have made, and um, I, I earnestly I think you're a good guy. I think all of you are good people. But if you really honestly want to lead, you have to lead. People have to know you have to, they you have to have followers. It's it's not just doing stuff and telling people about it. You can campaign any time you want. However, if you're doing it in an official capacity, you know, election season's coming up, and we've got uh, not only the uh, uh, tax issue, uh, there's going to be board members being reelected. And I, you can set up a table any, any place you want, but I think to say this is an official meeting of the CSD is really. Uh, Kind of breaching an ethical boundary. Um, I think. I think certainly you could say, "I'm Jeff Naylor. I'm your representative. I'm. I want to reach out to you and tell you what is on my mind." But to represent the CSD uh, as a group, I think. I think is it, or, or any positions uh, uh, that are going to be voted upon is uh, a breach of. Uh, ethics. Um, not to say that I don't want you to, to have that opportunity to speak to people. I think once you talk to more people, the more people you talk to, the better. Um, I much prefer the idea of a annual meeting where everybody, the entire board, can be assembled and you talk to a large group of people, present your ideas, hey, this is what we've been doing, and allow that forum to happen instead of the, you know, catch one person going in the market and that sort of thing. Um, but overall, I, I will have to say that I applaud the effort, um, but it really falls short, in my view, of of, of out really uh, public outreach because of the, of, of the controlled way that you're trying to uh, attempt to do it. Thank you. Any further discussion on item E1? Okay, we'll move on. Um, we are now on item E2, which is to appoint board liaisons for the Fire, Park and Rec Commission, and LAFCO for 2020. Um, it's generally good policy to rotate these positions. These are board positions, board liaisons to different commissions and or organizations. And um, rather than have one person, you know, sit on a, one board member sit on a uh, commission in perpetuity, it makes sense for um, different board members to um, have that. Bylaws. Pardon me? It's already in the bylaws. <laughs> yes. It's about alternating. Yes, it is. Yes. But that's what I mean, good policy. Just wanted to make sure you Good know. policy. Anyway, um, fire commission meets on the first Tuesday at 7 p.m. each each month. 
um, 2008, Director Shea was our board appointee, and last year, 2019, Director Oyser. Uh, the PNR Commission meets on the fourth Tuesday at 7 p.m. In 2018 and 2019, Director Perry um, served as our liaison. Um, I'm wondering if uh, Director Green and Director Shea would be willing to serve on either one of these commissions. Sure. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, Bill, you um, you served on the fire commission last. Would you be willing to serve on the uh, park and rec? That's the liaison. Very good. Okay. Um, so will, which is which? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, right. Um, Director Shea is um, <laughs> has been voted in as our park and rec board liaison. So and we're uh, assigned, I don't, yes. And um, we are without one at this point in time. Um, I'd be reluctant to ask Director Perry for a third consecutive year. If um, we can get uh, perhaps um, oh. Siobhan or myself, if necessary. Um, uh, you got too much to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I understand, but you, you've done your you know, for the last two years, and we appreciate it, by the way. When I spoke to Simone today, she said she'd be willing to do it again if there was not someone else who wanted to do it. Great. Well, let's, uh, let's confirm that. And if that's true, um, Director Royce from the movie our liaison to fire. <laughs> which is again not not particularly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to um, rotate that. Um, also, on occasion, it wouldn't hurt for me to show up at some of these meetings, even though I would just be a bystander, just to understand what's going on at the commission level. Okay, um, LAFCO. Um, I will just make my own comment on this, and this is subject to whatever everyone else on the board in their opinion, but I believe in at least the past year and probably before that, that the district manager has been our primary liaison for LAFCO, and I don't feel any reason to change that. If and when LAFCO actually has something for us to discuss, um, I'm sure that he can bring um, a, a member in for those discussions if needed. Uh, thoughts. The meetings are usually during the day as well. I don't go to many of the meetings. I uh, pay attention to the agenda as I see what's on there. Now, typically, Bill has been keeping an eye on that over the last couple of years. So I, pour oh, that, you really? yeah. I would forward him the agendas. Um, and then I'm in communication with Jason and uh, their executive officer quite often. Jason Green. That's what I thought. Yeah. So you know, if I'm wrong. wrong. No, I mean, so, in, in the last meeting they had in the evening, I think we all. Oh. Right, there was that one. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, well. Um, I, I love having Aaron present us. Yeah. And, it's, it's and as required, you know, if you need to call on Bill or any one of us um, for any purpose, as uh, discussions with that, but mm -hmm. hopefully uh, continue, um, that would be just fine. Great. Awesome. Okay. I have a comment on that. Yes, go ahead. So LAFCO is set up to, uh, for representatives, democratically uh, elected representatives whose primary uh, uh, obligation is to the public. Now, Eric is a professional that works for us, and while uh, you know, well, you know, he, I'm, I'm sure he tries his best to do good work. His, uh, you know, there's some self-interest there uh, with any employee uh, who uh, is serving in 
what is an elective uh, capacity. For example, uh, if taxation, uh, taxes uh, or a merger uh, could affect this district, uh, maybe even his position. And um, so are you, you really, I guess what I'm saying is you, this is a job for an elected official, not a staff person. And um, to uh, deny us that is, I think, abdicating your responsibility. Thank you. Uh, I don't think we are, but uh, I, I hear your words. Uh, I think that the board will be involved, and I think on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, Eric has done a uh, good job of keeping in contact with LAFCO. If and when LAFCO is going to make a decision that has any impact at all on our district, I'm sure a board member will be involved in those discussions. I know that for a fact. Okay, any further discussion on item E2? Okay, hearing none. Item E3, the district manager's report. Eric, did you have Sure. Uh, again, it's included in the package. The few kind of uh, highlights uh, that are in here, it's already been touched on, but uh, January 27th, two weeks from yesterday, uh, there will be a hearing with the Planning Commission regarding the park maintenance facility project. Um, that uh, things like staff reports and everything have not come out yet from the county. They have up until a week before the meeting to put those documents out. So I anticipate those will be coming out at that point in time. Uh, we will go in, obviously, present to the commission. Uh, it's a public meeting, so it's uh, it wants more time and everything is set, uh, which it has not been fully set yet. We will I will make sure you are all aware. We certainly encourage you. Welcome to attend. Um, Bill Hansel and I will present to the planning commission the merits of the project. Uh, an interesting opportunity that we're working with San Rafael Fire Department on for AmeriCorps grant is to bring a nice, nice team of AmeriCorps workers from what's known as the National Civilian Community Corps. Uh, the city of Santa Fe has had success with this grant. We are actually going to serve as the lead agent to so feel that we have a better chance of getting another round of funding and a potential team to come through here. Uh, but there's been a lot of great support from the administrative staff in the Santa Fe Fire Department, uh, primarily their uh, vegetation management crew who are helping us put this application together. So we've already submitted the initial piece of it and then I just submit a full application, which is due in about a month. Um, and then hopefully we'll have some word on that, and this team will come out and do uh, some, uh, a lot of vegetation management, uh, fuel reduction programs, as well as community education programs. Uh, it's just it's a win-win-win all the way around. We get a lot more done with 15 and 15 people at little to no cost uh, than we could ever get without them done. So this would be a lot of hand work. Uh, a little update on the March election, just letting you know that uh, both of our measures have been signed as Measure G and Measure H. Uh, those measures, again, strictly related to our appropriation limit. Uh, and are not proposing a new or change in the taxes uh, in any way, shape, or form. And then uh, I expect by next month we should have our full audit report and that should be presented in February. I'm uh, not anticipating any level of surprises with that. Yes? Uh, what time is the commission meeting on January 27th? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Uh, one document on the county says 11.30, another document on the county says 1 p.m. So as soon as they clarify that for me, I will let you know. No questions? No comments? All straightforward. Yeah. I, like, I like the uh, uh, fire character. Yeah, is there an opportunity for that for the whole community? Absolutely. Is there a timeline with regard to grant, you know, approval and award? For this one? Yeah. Uh, I, well, it moves relatively quickly, and I think if I remember correct, the dates of actual implementation were late April through early July, like 12 week program, so hopefully we will know shortly. Yeah, they'd be housed, this old, uh, the former station 53 over on Joseph Court. 
Uh, they'd be doing work with the city of Santa Fe on some of their projects, but the majority of their work for this round would actually occur within the Brainwood properties as well. Uh, but there's just, without their help and their administrative help on the app and on getting the team and the housing and everything else, uh, there's no way we're going to pull this mm -hmm. off on our own. So this is a really good opportunity, a good uh, collaboration with the city. Good partnership. Thank you. Absolutely. Just one second. Did anybody else have any questions? Well, I just wanted to know when it was submitted, when the grant request was submitted. Uh, the initial one was submitted last week, and we've already got confirmation and invited to submit a complete application that's not due until later next month. We got confirmation that? We are invited to submit a complete application. This was basically a pre-app. Oh. Uh, for what's known as a project concept form. The, that's what was submitted, that was approved, and we were invited to submit a complete application for this office. In more detail. Yep. And how long will that take before you submit it? Uh, it the due date is next month. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Stephen. Thank you. Yes, Stephen. Yeah, so I'll just go down. Um, first, on the park uh, maintenance facility. Uh, replacement project. Uh, notices went out. How many notices were mailed out, roughly? You mean by the county? Whoever whoever mailed out the notices. The county mailed out the notices. And how many was that? Uh, I don't know. You have to ask the county. Okay. So I believe the law requires uh, all residents uh, within 500 feet of, of the parcel. You don't, I, I think, Eric, I think you, you want to maybe pay attention to this because I live within 500 feet of the parcel and I did not receive a notice. And nobody I know has received a notice. Maybe some people received a notice. But I think you want to make sure that you're following the law as it's required. Well, again, that's county led, so I would take that up with the county. It's their the county does it? I yes. thought it was the responsibility of, of the applicant. So, um, so the way I look at it, we've got a 14-acre site, and all the properties in uh, that uh, around it deserve that uh, notification. Um, as far as the uh, grant, that's great that we have a grant. Um, hopefully, uh, this will be prioritized uh, first with Upper Lucas Valley, that is at most at risk. Um, but uh, but I, I, I don't know where it's going to be. Also, I, I'm concerned that they will do too much to uh, the ecology of, of the, uh, that land. I, you know, I, I would certainly like to, to understand where, what they're going to be doing and uh, where they're going to be doing it because this has potential to be a good thing or maybe a bad thing. Um, as far as the election goes, I guess congratulations. I didn't see that. I would have probably submitted an argument against, uh, given the fact that our revenues are up and uh, we've been spending a lot of money that I don't believe is justified. Um, and what I don't see here is any initiative to improve public safety. And I think that uh, I would ask that you make this a priority. Uh, there was an armed attempted rape here with a stolen handgun. The, uh, uh, the, the, the bathroom still does not lock at night. That's a potential uh, source of crime. And um, we all have children. Some of us have experiences, either personally or people close to us, and um, by ignoring this, you're really, you're ignoring the, the needs of the community. You're concerned about safety, and you have, uh, I forget his name, but uh, I, I, I don't want to, whatever your title is, you have him here to, I guess, uh, keep the peace here and I, I wish instead of investing in you know what is a, uh, a public uh, forum peaceable public forum that you take serious 
take serious the safety of our children. They're your children. They're your children. They're your children. They're your grandchildren. They're my children. And, 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 and the people that have experienced the kind of trauma that this young girl trauma carry it through a lifetime. I know that. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on the district manager report? Okay, moving on to item F, fire department matters. Um, F1 is the draft minutes of the fire commission on January 7th. Any comments on the, on the board on the fire commission? Um, I just would like to thank Commissioner Alvaro for his service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will, anything? No. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, we'll move on then to item wait, wait. Is this, is this is draft minutes? Oh, what sorry. I, 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 this is the meeting minutes of the fire commission. Uh, okay, sure. Do you both have comments on that? Yes, I do have oh, you comments. Do. Okay, uh, Linda, I think you had your hand up first. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, this kind of goes along with what Steve was talking about earlier about the minutes. And I don't know. And I, do I have an ego? But in the minutes, I was wondering why the district manager, or you wrote down that it has an ego, Right on, thank you. Um, I was wondering why the district manager didn't put in the draft minutes that I actually found a grand jury report from early last year that had a list of all the fire departments in Marin County and their status of whether or not they had sirens, um, elders, long range audio, something or others and our other information because we were talking about communicating in an emergency with Miranda people and so I had this list with every single fire department and whether or not they looked into things whether they have sirens whether they are looking into LVAD whether they decided no this was not a good idea that was not a good idea and I suggested that one or two of the fire departments could be talked to about why did they choose LVAD or why did they choose sirens just to start us off. I mean, why reinvent the wheel? You know, let's start us off. And I passed the grand jury report. It was one page. I passed it around to everybody in the commission. There's no mention of it. Okay. <laughs> Nobody would have known that it would have, was me that passed it out because you don't you know, talk in the minutes about any kind of public who's attending. So I guess it's not my ego after all. But in any case, I was wondering if uh, the person who wrote the minutes was biased against me and didn't include that. Or maybe it was just not an important thing. Thanks. Sure. Thank you. Yes, so th this dovetails with your desire for public involvement. You know, you look at these minutes and you go, what actually happened here? You're not, you know, you guys have the ability to record 100% of what's going on here. Just have the meeting here, turn on the camera. That would go a long way to transparency. Why isn't it happening? You know. What, what's the reason? What, what, why, why, what's the secret? I mean, I'm not saying, that, I'm not suggesting that bad things are going on. I'm suggesting that this district likes to operate as a closed club. And despite all the rhetoric that you want public outreach, it's not credible. It's not credible at all. And we have lots of examples of this. Um, I agree. I mean, you know, the fire department is under, you know, on the move, you know, with the wildland uh, tax and that sort of thing. And we really should know. And uh, 
I think you ought to look at it as an opportunity to gain public support, not a uh, something that if they catch us saying something wrong, we're surely cooked. Um, I think there could be uh, uh, there could be public support for sirens and additional taxes to clean up uh, our open space. So um, I urge you to actually have written notes, have a videotape recorder, or at the very least, an audio recorder of every single commission meeting, and you know, be willing to stand up and uh, for the actions taken or actions not taken. Okay, we'll move on. Um, item F2, Chief Officer Report and Activity Center. Hi, good evening everybody. Uh, brief report for you this evening. Uh, to start with, just want to update you on the Fire Chief's recruitment process. The application period closed yesterday. I reached out today to our HR department to see if I could get an update on how many applications were received and kind of the time frame moving forward. But didn't get a response, so I'll have an update for you next month on that. Uh, in December, Rimwood Engine Company staff assisted San Rafael Fire Inspectors with the inspections of all the school facilities in Rimwood. It's beneficial on multiple fronts to have fire inspectors and engine companies do fire inspections. It enables the firefighters to interact with the fire inspectors, they get to know each other. Uh, the fire inspectors are obviously very well versed in fire inspections so that they can instruct the engine company staff on things that they look for. And I think overall the process was, was very beneficial. Uh, Marine Wood Engine Company staff participated in a tour of the new public safety facility during the month of December. All three shifts were able to participate as far as I, I know. Um, Chief Gray, as part of his um, kind of his separation and uh, pre-retirement uh, duties wanted to uh, have as many people tour the facility as possible. Um, obviously, he was very much responsible for our, um, shepherding our new facilities, both uh, the public safety center and then both Station 52 and Station 57 at the same time. So I think it was very special for him to host those tours, and I think people got a lot out of it. Uh, the new public safety center is set to be completed this summer. Uh, the county is, well, not the county, but uh, Fire Safe Marin uh, is mailing out this flyer to residents in the high hazard fire zone areas throughout the county, uh, including San Rafael and Marinwood. So it should be hitting um, mailboxes shortly uh, in the Marinwood area. It's an excellent flyer. You can see it online at the Fire Safe Marin website as well. But uh, uh, that should be very informative and helpful to our residents to have a the wildfire. On December 13th, Engine 58 was first in on a working structure fire in an unoccupied dwelling on the Silvera Ranch property. Uh, the crew made a quick, fast stop, a very impressive stop uh, on the fire. It was an interior fire. Uh, appears to have started with some faulty wiring uh, inside this, this structure. There are no injuries. Unfortunately, nobody was displaced because the dwelling wasn't being used for a residence. So. I'll do there. Uh, a shift, which consists of Captain Papadicolo, Engineer Jeff Smith, and Firefighter Paramedic William Kelly, uh, recently provided hands-on CPR training, hands-only CPR training for Middle Creek uh, school students. Uh, it was reported to me that uh, approximately 180 students participated in the training. And the same crew also assisted with volunteer firefighter interviews, and there are currently six candidates in the process. And the start dates will be uh, this month, and the medical clearance for the new volunteers. Uh, Captain Papanicolo and Volunteer Battalion Chief Stilson recently attended a firefighter recruitment and retention workshop in Palm Springs. It was a FEMA-funded program, which also included leadership and management training. 
Uh, the Christmas tree disposal program is wrapping up in the county, both here in Ringwood and San Rafael. Unfortunately, uh, there, have no, there have been no Christmas tree related fires uh, in our communities uh, this year, which is good news. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, just before the Christmas holiday on December 22nd, we had a structure fire in Santa Benicia, which in 50, Engine 58 was uh, uh, basically first due with uh, the first alarm assignment on. It was a working structure fire in the master bedroom. Uh, the occupant was home at the time, and fortunately, both the occupant and her dog got out safely. And we were able to determine that the fire started with a uh, improperly stored heating pad. So, um, that the, uh, the home was severely damaged, but again, there were no injuries, and uh, fortunately, there were uh, a lot of family in the area that could uh, basically take care of this displaced uh, resident uh, while their home is being repaired. And then we've got the call activity, uh, the monthly call activity, which I think is fairly routine in nature. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, I think, in numbers. Um, and that concludes my report. Very good. Thank you, Susan. Questions from the board? Comments? Uh, what do we cover uh, in Nevada? Who covers here and how does that work? So our county dispatch agency positions units around the county. If there's a working structure fire in Nevada, for instance, uh, and Agent 58 responds, units are moved northward from San Rafael, possibly a San Rafael engine will cover the Marinwood station, and then units from Central Marin will start moving north towards San Rafael. So, there are what we call must-fill stations in the county when there's a major incident, and so the county dispatch center ensures that those stations are filled. So it's constantly yes. moving. Right. Right. Good question. And uh, uh, typically, what occurs when the incident is significant is a battalion chief from an unaffected area actually responds to comm center and then looks at the county map and moves units around to ensure that there is maximum coverage and balanced coverage around the county. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any questions from the board? Questions or comments from the public? Stephen? Yeah, so um, I won't be so crass as to ask uh, Chief uh, Sina uh, whether or not he applied. I, we'll find out soon enough. But in the event that he did, I just want to make some comments on Chief Gray as an excellent example of uh, a pro uh, professional that uh, I think any, any employee uh, working for the district uh, could learn from. Um, I think he was uh, clear-headed and analytical. And he provided us with plenty of information. He was willing to uh, discuss at whatever length necessary uh, about things that were happening within his department. And uh, should you be one of the candidates, I wish you the best of luck and uh, hopefully take heart uh, uh, that you've got a great example to follow. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Well, what do you think? Should we let her? Linda? Okay, I forgot that I made this comment at the Fire Commission meeting about Chief Sinnott. I've known him for years because I go to the San Rafael Fire Commission meetings and I see him all the time. Stephen talks about Chief Gray. This is another Chief Gray as far as the attitudes, the aptitudes, the experience, the intelligence, the calmness, the kindness, the compassion. I mean, right now we are in the best of all places having the previous chief leaving. And I just want to make sure you, I don't know if any of you guys have known the chief Senate, but he's terrific and he's just as great, younger, a little bit younger, but just as great as Chief Gray. Thank you, Linda. Yes. Here, here. Okay. Okay. Um, next fire commission meeting is February scheduled for February fourth, and we will move on to park and recreation matters. 
Um, there was no uh, PNR commission meeting in December, so therefore there are no minutes to report. Um, item G1 is the Park and Rec Maintenance Report. Thank you. <clears throat> well, just after our last meeting, uh, we had our Winterfest, annual Winterfest open house holiday event that went really well. We had, I think, the most authentic uh, Santa Claus I've ever seen at any event anywhere, so I was happy that uh, he made the stop here, and my boys were very excited to see him as well. Um, it was a great event. We had a lot of um, great staff keeping the energy up, and I was very, very pleased with how it went. Very well attended, and it was just a great way to bring in the holidays. Our next special event, as uh, Jeff mentioned earlier, will be our 10th annual Raise a Glass wine tasting, winter wine tasting on uh, Saturday, February 29th. We have, um, I believe, 11 wineries attending. Uh, we've got a great band that's been playing the last couple of years, Bistro Mustache, doing some juicy jazz and French uh, hot club music. And we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a, a great time. We hope everyone can make it out for that. Um, the staff has been busy this last few weeks, uh, finish, doing finishing touches on the Marina Review, which has gotten to print. And uh, we're looking forward to having the catalog coming out. And I believe our summer program registration will be opening up the first week of March. But um, that will be announced very shortly, uh, officially. And we have just been getting everything ready to be uh, opening up registration, taking pool memberships, summer camp registration. That will all start in the coming weeks. And we're doing a lot of prep to get ready for that. Today, uh, Robin and Stephanie both attended the California Parks and Recreation Society District 1 um, training slash mini uh, seminar. They were working with a bunch of other Parks and Rec staff from Marin County and surrounding counties. Um, dealing with the topics on staff retention and recruitment and some other things involving some of the programming and operations. And, um, they reported got some good tips, had a, got some good um, discussion with some of the colleagues and I um, wanted to get some of those ideas to look forward to our staff um, safe and uh, back in Chile. So um, on the parks and maintenance side of things, the staff has been busy keeping the uh, drains and culverts clear. We've been, uh, had a lot of trees come down this winter. Thankfully the rain has been intermittent, you know, one day on, a few days off. It's um, made, made that a lot easier than uh, the last couple of years where we've had this torrential downpour and days and days in the road. So um, it's been a little bit more manageable this season. But uh, we had to remove some trees from the creek and from some trails and the stuff that we've that. Uh, not too much damage so far from the creek. Um, some of the projects going on right now include the extent of the, the rail fence in the park um, a little bit this uh, last few weeks. Edges in the mini park to fill some of the gaps that, um, that, uh, that were there. And um, we're cleaning up um, some of the pruning and, and landscaping around the community center and the pool. Um, our, our next focus is going to be getting the pool ready for the new season. So um, we're getting things uh, painted and cleaned, doing our annual equipment inspection in the pump house to make sure everything's ready to go. And we'll be getting the pumps up to speed and the heat turned on. Um, about a month getting ready for, uh, for the new season. So a lot of work going on the pool right now to get ready for that. Um, and uh, yeah, any other questions? Good. As far as the pool is going, and everything, you won't know everything's in great working condition until you start things out. Right? Well, this last few years, we have changed our uh, winterization Protocol. We actually do keep the pumps running at very low speed so that uh, it's better so we don't have to find out, cross our fingers when we turn it on after four months. So everything is operating. Um, the pool is minimally treated just to keep algae at bay. And so um, we have two working relatively good heaters. Um, so we'll, we'll be firing those up to test them out this, this week. But uh, everything seems to be working on so we're still free. Clean things up and make sure everything's in tip top, but um, yeah, no really concerns the regular person. Okay. Um, with regard to the extension of the uh, rail, 
Does this have anything to do with any further degradation of the creek bed? So uh, that's a good question. We have seen some erosion um, in the creek over the last several years around the, the main part of the playground. And um, some of the uh, area where the, where the park ends, the, the cliff there, the, uh, the bluff, has been getting exceedingly steep where um, you know, kids chasing balls or people walking their dogs. It's sort of a, a, it's been a pretty sheer drop off in some areas, making us a little bit nervous. So the fence is partly um, to sort of a visual barrier to people from getting too close to areas that, that are not obvious that they're going to drop off. Um, we have a continued erosion, and um, I actually had um, John from the straw program come out with a, with a colleague of his, an erosion specialist, and a few months ago, we had a report that. Um, give some recommendations for once the rainy season ends for some plantings that we can do um, to sort of help uh, hold on to as much land as we can, but the creek continues to do what it does and there's been some erosion in that area. Um, you mentioned children. Uh, is a fence enough? Uh, <laughs> you know, is signage necessary? I mean, what, what, what do we do about a kid that actually ignores everything, including a barrier, hops it? Are there dangers? Yeah, I, well, I think uh, that's a good question. The, um, we do have some, sign, some temporary signage up in one area that's particularly deceivingly steep, and we'll on um, have got a, a more permanent sign that's going to be able to put up um, soon in that spot. Um, the kids do go up and down the, the, um, the creek and down the banks, and, and you know, uh, it's, it's not necessarily a, a going to be a fatal fall or anything like that. We're trying to keep it, you know, hey, there is a cliff here, there is a lake, be careful, and then we advise not to go past that, but people are going to go. Yeah, I understand it's sort of a human situation, but um, then again, just from a uh, risk mitigation standpoint, making sure people have been more. Exactly, yeah. So sign, there are signs up currently in the spots that are especially uh, being hazardous and more recent reporting inside the networks. Very good, thank you. Nothing further from the board? Public, oh, yeah. Um uh, Let's see, I guess uh, I'm just going to go down the list. Um, now, we have a rule uh, in the park uh, against alcoholic beverages. Um, we're doing a raise the glass event, that's fine. I guess some people really like to drink and need an event to go to do it. But even as I was coming in here, I don't know who they were or what the occasion was. They're enjoying a, a bottle of wine right in our lobby, which I think is a completely inappropriate for a family facility. We do actually have prohibition against this. We also have prohibition against the activity that takes place weekly uh, at the, uh, the pit. Uh, the horseshoe pit. Now I'm not really, I'm not a blue nose, I, I think it's fine to have a drink every once in a while, but I think it does need to be controlled and we are now at the point where it's not being controlled well. Because we've had incidents that, well, I would describe last April's incident was uh, the the perpetrator said he had too much to drink even though he wasn't of legal age. I mean, how does that even happen? And why, why isn't every one of you as outraged as I am about this and want to do something, do something proactive? You have the tools. You have actually already have the rules. You're not enforcing the rules. I don't like uh, encouraging alcohol use and most especially alcohol abuse on this, in, in this park, and um, I'm asking you to take proactive steps. You're worried about, about kids falling down a ravine? Well, I'm worried about uh, alcohol and, and uh, the issues of liability that that creates. We, were, we are, are actually negligent when we, we allow this, this uh, activity to occur. What if say this party out here is drinking and fell down and 
and said, hey, you didn't stop me drinking, I'm going to sue you. I think they might actually have a case. Um, professional development, I'm happy that uh, Robin and Stephanie are meeting with some park and rec people. Um, although most of our land is actually open space, and I've made this request in the past, and I, I, I really would like to see it. I'd like to see uh, staff trained in proper trail management. As you know, we're settling with the Millers because there was an erosion problem on a heavily used trail. Well, maybe that's something we could have avoided by proper maintenance. I don't know. But um, it certainly would have strengthened our hand in whatever negotiations you're involved with now. Uh, my, per you know, I do have some kind of background in this. I was uh, trained in environmental science and served for a while as an uh, interpretive naturalist uh, back east. Uh, Appalachian Mountain Club, Jeff, you're probably familiar with it. Um, so I know a little bit about trail maintenance, and I gotta say, it continues to astound me the about amount of abuse that the staff has uh, taken on in our natural portions of our park. Um, you have two people here tonight, me and Linda, who have broken bones recently, and uh, neither one of us did it in the park, thank God, but, but uh, the park serves as our recreation and rehabilitation resource and when you ignore things like safety railings like uh, benches for people to rest you're really you're really ignoring the needs of a large segment of the population uh, I believe we could probably even get grant money to assist us with uh, these improvements um, but uh, unfortunately there seems not to be interested in that, and once again, I scratch my head. Well, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? Why aren't you? Why aren't you taking care of the parks? Why aren't you taking care of the open space? We've got a beautiful, beautiful um, uh, community here, and all it needs is proper care. And proper care really is not complicated or 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 uh, labor intensive. It's actually just awareness of what to do and what not to do and you know there doesn't seem to be much interest just drive the truck up the up to empty the trash and that's about all the maintenance that we do and uh, it's a shame because okay thank you we have much more to 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 uh, to do here well okay. thank you uh, uh, Jeff please don't interrupt me like that that's Kind of rude. I don't interrupt you, and I wish you'd you'd take a different approach to your. If you would please conclude your comments. That that's a good. Yeah, I'm I'm concluding it, but that's the proper way to address that issue. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. Next park and rec commission meeting will be January. Okay, moving on to item H, board member items of interest, request for future agenda items. Or do you have any items of interest that they would like to mention this evening? None of you are interested? Oh my god. Okay. No interest at all from the board. Okay. How about um, let me finish with the board, please. Thank you. Um, how about future agenda items? Nothing come to mind? Okay. Linda? Um, this particular item, I know it, it used to say items of interest. And then it says board member items of interest, which I agree with because we had our time and open. Mm -hmm. But the request for future agenda items can the public ask, we used to be able to ask for a future agenda item. I believe you can. Okay, thank you. So I would like to ask, um, 
in, in just a teensy bit of background, because I already asked the district manager about a few of the changes that were made to the agenda, and I know the minutes, and also why the minutes have been eliminated. Um, I believe, and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was the district manager and the screen previous president, one of the previous presidents of the board, made some of these decisions. And I didn't know if any of the other board members should have been involved or would have liked to have been involved. Because I think some of the residents, me, 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 would have liked to at least give you a little input on the agenda items and the minutes. And I know I know you know I love detail, okay? That's one thing. But it seems to me that the names of the attendees just suddenly stopped including residents. Oh, oh Stephen and Linda. Why? And I'm, you know, if the answer you won't answer, no, but why did you decide not to show that Linda attended the meetings? I just think it's kind of a Oh, who is she? We don't want to talk about her. No, she wasn't there. No, we, and, and in the comments with the minutes, it says we got a comment from somebody in the audience or whatever it says. So that's one thing. The other thing is why are the minutes so abbreviated so that we have absolutely no idea what's going on. And that, again, it refers to one of the other things I said earlier about jazzing up the minutes in maybe one or two items that might be interest of interest to residents. But I don't know if the whole board was involved in any of this decision making. Thank you. May I respond? Sure. Um, Linda, I'd like to respond to your comment. Sure. Um, I was involved in revising the minutes, um, the project. Um, it was a multi-meeting project where several uh, drafts were revised and discussed by the board and ultimately voted on by the entirety of the board and unanimously approved. Oh, was the, it in a board meeting? Um, yes. The minutes have been revised in accordance with Rosenberg Rules of Order. Um, also, um, according to this publication, public members do not need to be listed in the minutes. Uh, timing of the agenda uh, does not have to be included. It's almost discouraged to um, be included because um, then it implies that the discussion may not start before that time. Um, and that's no. why many, uh, yes, many... Um, no public agencies do not list the time yeah, of look at the, the board please don't interrupt me and don't speak over me. Um, finally, um, the meeting minutes format um, was revised because of the subjectivity that was uh, continuously attacked um, by your, yours very truly and Mr. Nestle. Okay. So that's why um, we try to make it as objective and as uh, content specific as, as possible. Thank you. But there's nothing in the minutes. Are, are you changing the last time's minutes? Because you didn't actually, you, you, you actually went out of your way to, to not tell the truth. Um, um, just to answer your question. Uh, concern about it according to the agenda of last meeting the public comment on a uh, uh, closed session was supposed to take place before Where, the what actual time was closed it supposed session to please don't interrupt me when I'm uh, uh, you know, and, you, you um, know then respect works both both ways uh, and I am very uh, respectful uh, to you however when you when you're when you're you're doing this uh, Isabella it's it's not respectful Okay. Uh, point of order? Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Go ahead. I, 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 no, 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 I have something to say. I, I want, I, I really actually think that you've misquoted uh, Rosenberg's rules. Certainly the uh, ethics and the, uh, 
the spirit of Rosenberg has been violated. You, you guys continually find ways to, you know, slice it so you so you you are not transparent. Um, as far as the future agenda items, I would like you guys to to really have some ethical training and discuss what you've learned in public at the ethics ethics complaint. To, uh, 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 ethics uh, training. Um, I think public outreach is great. I'd like to see more of it, but it has to be honest, the public outreach. And, you know, we have the safety issues that you're not addressing. I'd like to see a meeting on that, and I'd like to see a meeting on open space and proper care of the district beyond the rec program here. That's all I have to say. I hope it wasn't too painful for you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Item I. Second. I didn't even ask. I'll take it. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much for your attendance. Huh? No, we don't. I think it's unanimous.